Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Evil Genius. So last time you remember we actually completed the objective uh, uh, Doomsday Beckons. And one of those things was to interrogate this cosmonaut. But as you can see he's still here because we, we never finished interrogating him. Uh, so we're just going to shoot him in the face. So yeah. <laughs> Sucks to be you buddy. You were mentally broken and now you're going to get shot. I wonder how that feels. Probably not very good. No, no, not you. I guess you could do it. You do have a long range. No, don't let him out. What are you doing? Just murder him. Murder him. How come he can get through doors? Murder him. Oh, he can't be murdered. Interesting. I guess we should just let him go? No, we're not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna keep trying to murder him. I'll be back in a bit. So, I, we're gonna go ahead and try to interrogate him to death, see if that works. Nope. Eh, I guess we should just let him go. Oh well. I guess he can't be killed. That disappoints me. I really wanted to kill that cosmonaut. Well, blah. So something I just wanted to point out, check out the notoriety on this damn thing! It's 15 notoriety, that's huge! Um, I guess I'll go ahead and read the fluff text since I'm already here. That's a risk of six. Damn. A rogue general has been quietly raising a large private army in Southeast Asia with the intention of di disposing the chairman of Communist China. Without support, the general's campaign is doomed to failure. Anvil are keen to retain stability in the region and will quickly quash the embryonic revolution. Help the general convert more of the region to his cause by sponsoring propaganda campaigns. It's unlikely that he'll ultimately succeed, but causing internal strife is the main goal here. And look how many guys it takes. Five valets, four mercs, four quantum physicists, four playboys, and three marksmen. Ugh, it's a lot of peeps. And I've lost almost all of them because of that insanely high risk factor. Good evening. This is the night recorded on the Hong Kong Next Hong Kong serving southern China and Southeast Asia. The region is in turmoil tonight following the nefarious activities of a group of Indians doing the bidding of an as-yet-unknown evil genius. Anvil has been lambasted by its most vocal critics who accuse the agency of defending Peking and mainland China at the expense of peripheral weeks. Yeah, so that's the same. Um, something that I've noticed is that different regions that you do uh, things in, they all have the same announcer. So, like, this one has the same announcer, this one has the same announcer, this one has... So, I mean, like, it's different for each one, but they're the same announcer each time you do a mission in that particular region. Because that was the same guy, and almost the exact same message that I got for doing this one. But that's neither here nor there, so I'll be back in a bit. Um, hey everyone, so just a, a couple things I want to talk about. As you can see, I'm, I'm kind of setting up some basic, basic trap combos. Like, I got some bees in here. Uh, I'm setting up a do not press and gas trap combo. You know, nothing... Nothing too serious, but some. But what I really wanted to talk about was well, something that gets frustrating is the higher your notoriety goes, the more serious that the territories take you as a threat, obviously. Um, the downside to that is that they start to just shoot some of your minions on sight. They, they, just, they, they don't even care. Like They're like, oh look, there's a minion, shoot him in the face. Um, especially when you go to piss them off a lot. I might want to move these over into this one. That'll be funnier. I don't think they ever break, actually break into this one. I don't think I've ever actually seen them pass this chamber, to be honest. The rest of these might all just be useless. They might have to delete these. Anyway. Um, what was it? Oh, right. Uh, we also unlocked the last minion, and I stole that cannon. So now we're down to four choices. Dr. Neuricide. The Butcher. Red Ivan, who could be kind of funny to pick up. And the Great Mesmero. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Great Mesmero, honestly, because I've never really used him before. And he could be interesting. And plus, I've heard he has some pretty, uh, pretty interesting skills. So, yeah, let's do that, just for, just for giggle's sake. So, the Great Mesmero. Our agents report that a man matching the description of the Great Mesmero has been seen with a traveling freak show in Brisbane, Australia. Mesmero, the arch hypnotist, is able to manipulate even the strongest minds. He will be a great asset on the island, and should dispatch minions to convince him. We should dispatch minions to to convince him to join our cause forthwith. So yeah, 
Uh, Mesmero, I choose you. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, not a whole lot else going on. Uh, as you probably saw, our notoriety is up to 408, so we are just rocking out. It's great. It's great. Uh, we have 400,000 in cash, cash monies. Money cash. Cash, 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 cash. I'm pretty sure I've done all the plots here. Like I said way earlier in the series, you cannot get all the bars all the way up to complete. Because there's just some you can't do. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one is almost done, though. But, like, for example, since we don't pick up the butcher, we won't be able to get this one all the way full, I don't think. Uh, plus, there's a few other things. So, mostly, I mean, other than that, not a whole else is going on, just kind of... Oh, right, I'm supposed to be plotting it's South America. <laughs> so I can find that last... Wow, I am dumb. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll come back once we get to make Great Mesmero. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so our base is on fire, and this is something I was talking about before. So see these two valets? They're running all the way over here to pick up these fire extinguishers, but there's one laying on the floor right here that another valet had, and he was killed. So instead of picking that one up, these two morons run all the way deep into the base. Oh, now he's going to go pick it up. Oh, also this camera exploded, so there's no need for him to actually put out any fires, but it's just kind of fun. So, there's that. Damn saboteurs. Alright, here we go with the great Mesmero. G'day, mate. Today's Australasian events. Reports indicate that the great Mesmero has finally left our fair shores after months of wreaking havoc with his evil hypnotic skills. There have been many high profile casualties, not least our very own Comedy Bruce, who had an encounter with a great Mesmero last week. <laughs> he was hypnotized into thinking that he was a dingo before running off into the outback. Maybe Mesmero isn't all bad after all. <laughs> uh... Yeah, fuck Comedy Bruce, he's a douche. No one likes him. <laughs> so, anyway. The Great Mesmero, everybody! Anyway, to read his backstory, real quick. Stanley Trotter was born into a working caste family from the East End of London. At the age of 30... At the age of 30 is still living at... Really? At the age of 30, still lived at home. Okay, I see it's in the past tense. And spent his day working with his parents' pie shop serving pies and jelly eels to the local cockneys. Utterly unremarkable in every sense of the world, Stanley was a mummy's, was a mummy's boy through and through. I wonder if I should be reading this with a British accent. Probably not. It was widely accepted that the Charters had been cursed with the genetic aberration of a son. That's not very nice. A, fun, a, a chance find in an attic led to Stanley discover, discovering an ancient tome entitled The Art of Hinod. Really? Hynosis? Genetic hypnosis. There's no P in there. And Stanley's life suddenly had purpose. As Stanley read the dark word written within the archaic tome, he realized that the better part of his life had passed him by. He was twisted with bitterness and became the most feared of stage performers. The arch hypnotist. The great Mesmero! So his two powers are telepathic mind control. Using his hypnotic skills, Mesmero can physically take control of an agent and manipulate their actions. This ability may fail if the target has high smarts. Willpower drain. Mesmero can sap the loyalty of enemy agents by casting a hypnotic miasma that makes all nearby agents believe that their own agency was behind the death of their favorite pet. Uh, the only downside to the great Mesmero that I'm aware of... Where are you, buddy? Hey, ah, damn. Once more. Is his skills take a oh, sure ton of experience to accumulate, but, I mean, whatever. I'm not too worried about it. I'll just send him out on a lot of uh, missions and such. Uh, I want these guys to activate these bee traps. Bees! So where the hell are all my techs? I have no techs. That's awesome. Really. That's just super cool. Man. I need more. <laughs> I need my people to learn things. Anyway. So yeah, that's the Great Mesmero. Um, I'm gonna do more shit off camera, and then, uh... 
I don't think you stop plotting there. We'll be back once we figure something out. So see you guys then. Shit! It's Dirk Masters, also known as Rambo. This guy's an asshole. So, this is the super agent for Patriot. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh, God, I hate Dirk Masters. <clears throat> so, Dirk Masters. Wow, that is... I really wish we weren't in the jungle. That is really loud. Anyway, Dirk Masters is the bulging, bulging Patriot Super Spy, a trained Special Forces operative and veteran of numerous conflicts. He soon found he had the skills to be a brilliant secret agent. Dirk's methods are none too subtle. He's a no-nonsense gum-chewing yank whose motto is shoot first and then shoot some more. Since foiling a nefarious plot to turn the Great Pyramids into a gigantic nuclear missile, man, that'd be awesome. Masters has officially been retired. However, each year something inevitable crops up and the army helicopter carrying his old war buddy, Colonel Chase, hovers into view at the Masters Ranch in Minneapolis. And before you know it, Dirk Masters is back, undertaking one last mission for his country. So yeah, that's kind of an homage to like 80s action movies. I mean, it's obviously Sylvester Stallone as Rambo, but I mean, the helicopter, you know, his war buddy, Colonel Chase, I mean, that's, that's so many things, like, off the top of my head, um, ah, oh, what is that movie with, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Commando, yeah, where he's, like, out in the woods with his daughter, and a helicopter comes flying in, and they're like, oh my god, we need you, and he's like, I'm retired, and his goofy boy, I don't know, I'm just, ugh, anyway, I hate Dark Masters, he's a douche, you know, that, that, shoot first and then shoot some more is totally true. He will just mow down anyone who you send out to get him. So this whole little exploit slash totally, you know, using Lord Kane, you know, pretty much using the Lord Kane thing is almost a must unless you want to lose a huge chunk of your minions. He's a pain in the ass. But his special abilities. Suppression fire. Dirk Master's huge bulk lets him carry a phenomenal amount of fire power. This is never more obvious than when he is letting rip with his dual M60 machine guns. He's also indomitable, just like everybody, and his two objectives is to be a soldier and to sabotage. So yeah, he's a douche. I hate him. Oddly enough, um, yeah, like every other, all the other super agents up to this point, like. Mariana Mamba was a saboteur and a thief, so saboteurs are annoying. Mostly it's saboteurs and soldiers. Dirk Masters is really one of the biggest pains in the ass. I mean, for keeping your minions alive, he's a huge pain. Um, he's not too terrible. Where are you, Lord Kane? So you are just going to freeze him in place. And then my man here... It's bad. At the max. So just do some mini special moves. Beat the other shit. Just kill him, please. Let's so get out of here. Just everybody. Uh, just put him out of my misery, please. I mean, I know we can't kill him. Do we have that? No. No, we don't, and it's sad. Although, while he's here, we can totally take advantage of his being a badass and just mess with Patriot. That'll be awesome. So, yeah, I mean, uneventful. I, I wonder if... Eh, I don't know. I really don't want to let any of the super agents just run roughshod over my guys. That would be... I mean, it'd be amusing, I guess, for you guys, but it'd be irritating for me. So, I'm not going to do it. But, I mean, you know, trying to take out a super agent without doing the Lord King combo... I guess is what I'll call it. <laughs> but yeah. So, that's Dirk Masters. He's a huge pain in the ass. But I'm gonna put him in a cage and put him through the uh, put him through the blender a whole bunch and then mess with Patriot while he's here. So, that'll be interesting. See you guys in a bit. Oh, um, also, I guess I should mention Casablanca is in North Africa, not in South America. Apparently. <laughs> I had to look it up because I was plotting here and nothing was popping. I was like, where is this damn mission? But it's in North Africa. So hopefully that'll pop soon. Relatively soon. But yeah. Ah, oh, thank god the Rocket Engine fans' plans finally popped. That was a long and irritating wait. Alright. 
So that was the last one, and it just dawned on me I forgot to read the fluff text for that. Shit. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so that was the plans to steal the rocket, or interrupt the rocket testing section by stealing the plans to construct an engine of our own in the rocket caverns. Um, so I'm not sure where they put the rocket plans. Uh, apparently they put them in our inner sanctum. Okay. That's cool. We can go ahead and leave those there, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead and build this rocket engine. I said, oh, I guess we can't do that till it gets here. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, wait till that gets there, and then go ahead and get that taken care of. Be back in a bit. Also, I guess here's something you can see, what I was talking about earlier, about how they're different colors. So these are both Smash Saboteurs, but one is good and one is pathetic. And you can see they're different colors, so mildly interesting. All right, and the rocket plans are acquired. Let's get this baby built. Boom. As soon as it's done saving. There are the rocket plans. Or the rocket... Blah, blah, blah. The catwalk console now available. Anyway, let's check out these new... So, ultimate test. Test fire the rocket engines and arrange a video conference with world leaders to ensure your demands. Build, build a launch button on the catwalk. Cat... Cat... Ah! Cavern catwalk. Then make your evil geni genius interact with it to start the rocket engine test. Firing the engines is a dangerous process. If you run out of minions in the rocket cavern, the test must be started again. Providing multiple entrances to the cavern will make it easier for your minions to enter it. Fire the engines for an unbroken minute to proceed. Con uh, construct a global communications network by building five transmitter aer aerials outside in a TV studio in the inner sanctum. When the rocket engine test has been successfully completed, make your evil genius interact with the inner, t inner sanctum TV studio to issue your ultimatum to the world. But that will have to wait for next episode because we have uh, gone over our limit. So uh, I'm going to get some things set up to get that taken care of because uh, this next part can be a little challenging. But, I mean, it's it's not outside of our scope of abilities to get it done. Um, so thank you very much for watching and join me next time on Let's Play Evil Genius.